We're 90 minutes into trading on Thursday, October 14th. Hello, traders. Let's take a look at the previous picks. Yesterday, Wednesday morning before the open, I put out a video. I gave you two stocks that I really liked. TSLA was one of them. You can see that's where Tesla was on the open yesterday, right around the 807 level. Today, it's been as high as $817. Nice pick. It's gone well for us. UPST was the other stock that I highlighted. And again, yesterday on the open, stock around $335, up to $364 this morning. A gorgeous pick. Look at that baby run. Love that breakout there. Love the downward sloping trend line. Breakout to the upside. Away we go. Let's see what we can find today. Let's get our market bearings first, see what's going on. We've got a nice little market rally today. Go into the daily chart. Let's take a look at what's happening on a daily basis. Daily chart basis, longer term basis. We need to get the major moving averages up so that we know where they come into play. The 100-day moving average has been coming into play and the 50-day moving average could be in play soon. You can see the 100-day moving average. We've been able to close below it a couple of days. I view that as bearish because it tells me that this selling pressure is for real. The more time we spend below the 100-day, the more legitimate the selling pressure. Risk off. You can see this downward sloping trend line visually here. So let's draw it in because it's been violated to the upside and that is good. That is bullish. You can see it come into play right like that. And you can see how we're breaking out above it. The 50 day moving average does stand in the way and that is at 442.57. So that will provide some resistance. But if we can close above this downward sloping trend line today, I would view that as bullish little bit of horizontal resistance that we're getting through here as well looks pretty good overall action very choppy back and forth what is causing this move today nothing as far as i can see all the issues that have been out there for a while are still out there the fomc minutes came out yesterday there was hardly any market reaction to it so if there were going to be a reaction based on what the fed officials are saying we would have seen it yesterday and that news came out right about here. And you can see the market did absolutely nothing. And there is talk of tapering. It may start in November, should end by the middle of 2022. So the market, at least for right now, is really discounting that news. Doesn't care too much about it. Let's take a look at the TLT and see how bonds have responded. You can see a nice bounce. Yesterday, in fact, before the FOMC minutes, we we're already trading above the 200 day moving average. So bonds have been able to move higher. That means interest rates are moving lower. That is good for the market. What we would not want to see is a continued slide like that because that would imply much higher interest rates. So right now we're getting a little bit of a bond rally, lower interest rates. This is all decent news for the market. I think that's why we're getting a little bit of a release here a little bit of a relief rally too the bid tends to be pretty strong heading into earning season and earning season is kicked off the big banks will dominate the scene and the news has been okay haven't really seen financial stocks move dramatically one way or the other but an interest rate environment where rates are rising would be good for bank stocks not good for the market but good for bank stocks these gap and go formations like this are my least favorite pattern to trade. And the reason for that is that we get all stocks rallying right on the open. I don't like to chase. And when you get these gap and goes that start to hold and then move higher, you don't have a chance to really find relative strength or relative weakness because everything is moving higher. And it isn't until we get the first market dip that you really are able to evaluate how strong the bid for that stock is. So if you're in this mode here, I trade very, very passively. I haven't even traded yet today. I get into kind of a mode where I'm thinking I'm going to get my chance sooner or later today. And if I'm very, very patient, I will find that window of opportunity to either buy or short it doesn't matter i just have to be patient the worst thing i can do is to come in and chase this market and then to have a nasty decline that starts to fill in some of this gap because you're loaded up in here and then the rug gets pulled out from under you 
I don't want to take that risk. Another scenario that could unfold on these gap situations is a compression. Compress, 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 compress. Then we get to see a 1OP cycle. Right in here, we're seeing a 1OP cycle. It is a bullish divergence because 1OP, when it heads down like this, you would expect the market to sell off as well. When you get this type of move in 1OP and the market's able to compress or move higher, that is what we call a bullish divergence. It means that we're going to see prices drift higher. So just to get back to my earlier comment, I would love to see a compression, compression, compression like this. It gives me lots of time to evaluate relative strength and look for the right stocks. And then combined with a bullish divergence like this, I know the market's going to be breaking out. I can start scaling into those stock positions and feel confident in them because I'm not chasing. I've given the stocks plenty of time to pull back and retrace, and they haven't. So that tells me that the bid is strong. So on that type of move, I would be a little bit more aggressive. So I'm very passive on a gap and go. A little bit more aggressive on a compression and then go. Now the pattern that I would like the most in terms of buying stock is a chunky little kind of gradual move lower with green candles and red candles because that suggests to me that on the way down we are seeing some buying. So maybe like this. If this is how the market opened and we started to see a gradual drift lower, but lots of mixed candles, green and red, this is perfect because a pullback like that will give me lots of time to evaluate stocks and look for that relative strength. So as the market is probing for support, everything pops up and every stock looks great on the open when you're right in here. But when you start getting into this pattern in here, the fakes start to leak oil. And I can sift them out and I can focus on stocks that while the market's doing this on the open and trying to find that support, I'm looking for stocks that boom, 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 are moving higher when the market is coming in. That way I know that when that support level is established and we're in the gap somewhere, once that support is established, those stocks with that relative strength, I can start scaling into them right here aggressively. This would be my favorite type of setup on a day like this. Didn't get it though. So I vary my bets according to what I see happening in the market. I'm also painting scenarios in my mind of what could possibly unfold, which the most likely scenarios are, which would be my most favorable scenarios to take positions. This is something that you have to get good at every day if you're going to be day trading. So there was one more pattern that could have emerged today and that would be a gap reversal long red candle long red candle long red candle very little overlap in these candles in the first 30 minutes that would be a gap reversal that would get me super bearish if I saw that now instead of shorting a bunch of stocks and looking for stocks to short I don't have a lot of time to react to those so I'm just going to short the futures the other thing is that because we've had such a strong bull market over the course of the last 18 months or so, you've got to be very, very careful because once the market finds support, we get these violent snapback rallies. Well, if I'm spread out along five or six different stocks and I'm short them and I get one of those big moves up, I'm going to be scrambling to try and exit my stock positions. However, if I'm short the S&P 500 futures and I get those moves, I'll be able to participate. I'll be able to take profits very quickly. And if I get one of those phantom candles, I'll be able to cover my position, exit, and then continue to look for opportunities, perhaps even on the long side because support will have been established. So on a gap reversal right now because of the market strength, I do favor shorting S&P futures. We didn't get anything remotely like that, but we have seen that pattern in the last couple of weeks. So four different scenarios. I just want to review them very quickly. Gap and go where we open higher and we continue to move higher. My least favorite because I'm having to chase, chase, chase. The other thing about gap and go formations that we've seen over the course of the last few weeks is that you get the gap up, 
you get the continuation and then continuation ends after about an hour of trading and then we flatline i think we're going to flatline the rest of the day unfortunately that's not what i want but eyes wide open i feel that that is a very distinct possibility if i go back to a couple of days last week you'll see exactly that formation it's a gap and go formation once we fill the gap we just sit there the rest of the day and wait so that's a likely scenario today if we can close above that downward sloping trend line today that will be excellent here is a gap reversal down Long green candle, long green candle, long green candle, long green candle. When you see this, that is a gap reversal. You want to be in full force. This is a very powerful pattern. Now I'm going to continue to go back and see if we can find some of the other patterns. And then that will really help to solidify the lesson that I'm trying to teach you today. And we'll see if we can find some others. Sorry for the delay here. That is what I'm talking about. Gap and go and nothing. Zero zip flat line. So you get your move, everything quiets down. I could probably show you another gap and go reversal, or excuse me, a gap and go formation on the downside. And let me see if I can find that. Uh, a little bit similar here because you sell off and then you get into that compression right in here and then it's nothing going but if you had been patient here and you hadn't gotten all frazzled because you wanted to short the market and you were just patient you would have actually had a nice little buying opportunity set up late in the day and let's see if we can find any other formation where maybe we have a compression on the open yeah I'm not able to find one and in this instance we had a gap and go but it actually extended about 90 minutes and that was a very very nice one you can see how it climbed and then eventually we went into that holding pattern and this one might be on the bearish side so same type of thing you open lower you continue to fall and then you compress so those are some different patterns that I look for on the open the gap and goes are my least favorite right now if I have a solid market low meaning a capitulation low that would happen where we get that deep deep trough and then we get a nice big bullish candle like this and then we have it in the next day and we continue higher then i'm okay with it so i'm okay with trading today's i'm not crazy about it i didn't see the news that led me to that leads me to believe that something material has changed we have a lot of dark clouds that are looming on the horizon right now so earnings season, I think, is creating a little bit of a bid, but that 50-day moving average should provide some resistance, and the action is already starting to wane a bit. So I am bullish today. I like the fact that we've been able to get above the downward sloping trend line on a daily basis. So that's I'm going to take a look for some bullish stocks and see what we've got in play right now. And we'll start off with the daily chart. I'm just going to go into my heavy buying list and we'll take a look. UNH, earnings before the open today. Nice gap up through that downward sloping trend line. UPST was my pick from yesterday. So I'm uh, going to leave that one alone. That train has left the station. TWLO could be good if it, could, if it can get through the high from today. So click GTC, double click on that bar. Now I'll know if it can get through the high of the day. If it can, those are a couple of major moving averages that it's been able to get through. Downward sloping trend line, pretty nice. A little horizontal resistance, yes, I think that would be a decent trade. Got a little bit of a similar situation here. Downward sloping trend line on COIN. Click GTC. And I'm going to click this candle right here. You can see we almost touch right in there. I want to know when we break this to the upside. That is a significant line of resistance. You can see nice strength today. Long green candle stacked, a little bit of a pullback, bullish flag. Off we go. Probably another bullish flag setting up and we'll continue to go higher. The first one is always a buy. The second one's usually a buy. By the third one, you start getting marginal gains so the longer this type of rally goes on through the course of the day the more tired it gets but you can see 
very heavy volume. So coin looks pretty good, but I'd really like to see it get through that D1 resistance before I take a position in it. There's a nice downward sloping trend line. OKTA OK, closes on its high of the day above those major moving averages, and then boom, big liftoff this morning. PayPal, I don't see anything too great there right now, although a close above that 200-day moving average, we'd give, get a double bottom higher low right here. That would be a decent support level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click GTC. I'm going to click on this candle. There's your horizontal resistance line. I'm still looking for it. This is nice. S-N-O-W. It's a nice little breakout here. You've got a cup and handle formation, a breakout to a new high, continuation today. Yeah, I like SNOW. UPS, downward sloping trend line right here. Broken to the upside through that major moving average, the 200-day, looking to get through that 50-day moving average. Yeah, I like UPS in here. That could be a nice, nice pick. So how do I trade this i'm going to click an alert line and i'm going to drop that so it'll continue to move lower eventually the stock will break out above it and it'll get back on my radar net has been super strong can't really suggest that one uh continue to go down we've got a lot of stocks that have been beaten down that are starting to move higher there's a nice one downward sloping trend line broken to the upside above the 50-day long green candles stacked new high yeah, S-P-L-K. And I like the fact that it's starting to find some support here. Halfway up this long green candle. That is support as far as I'm concerned. And that level has been preserved. As long as it can preserve that, I like it. I think it could continue to go higher. If it continues to drift down and we breach that, then I think you got to hold off on it. Still kind of looking for that one really nice trade that I like and uh, I continue to take a look I want to set you up with something good here that's nice D dog breakout like that at the high able to preserve all the gains from yesterday although it does have a strong market to lean on today let's take a look at that five minute chart eh, pulling back a little bit some red candles chopping in here this stock has the potential to go tomorrow though so if it can hold on to those gains, it could be a nice one. And let's go into this daily chart and see what we've got going on here. CRWD, downward sloping trend line, breach to the upside, able to hold this long green candle. UPS, uh, just got through that downward sloping trend line that I drew. I'm going to continue to look here. Let's find something pretty decent. All right, we'll go in and see what Google's doing. Google's pretty nice in here. I like that. Google is going to be my pick of the day today. I like that. And I'm going to show you why right now. So Google, we got a couple of nice things setting up here. We've got this upward sloping trend line here. Ignore that tail, but the tail does show us support at the 100-day moving average. Visually, we can draw a line down through here. So let's use the trend tool and click on these highs here. And then we're going to draw the line somewhat like that. We've got a shallower line that comes into play here, but you can see that it's breached that shallower line to the upside. You've got your 50-day moving average right here. That's decent. You've got a little bit of a cup and handle formation here with resistance around here. Gosh, really like to see that stock get above that downward sloping trend line right there. But if Google closes on its high of the day, I think it'll have a shot tomorrow to gap up and move higher. So again, this is predicated on the market being able to hold that downward sloping trend line as well. But I like Google. I like Google for the next couple of days. Let's put up that N5 chart, take a look at it, put up the 1OSI indicator, and that way we'll be able to see relative strength. So yes, the stock has been able to maintain its relative strength. We are not quite two hours into trading right now. So let the stock come in. There's no reason to buy it right now. Remember what I told you about the market? Market first, market first, market first. Compression. You have got to be thinking compression for the rest of the day. And then maybe in the last hour of trading, 
we get a little bit of a surge higher. That would be ideal because it would take us up to the 50-day moving average and it would show that, yes, there is still some gas left in the tank. When that happens, you want to see Google participating, wait for it to come in, form support, and then look later in the day for it to start gaining some relative strength. So once it pulls back and sellers take profits and it starts to bottom out in here and the market's still flatlining, you'll see Google tick, tick, tick higher off of that low with the market flat that's relative strength that would be a good entry point then you're hanging out of the position seeing if the market gives you a little bit of lift into the close if it does then you want to see google close on its high you could take profits on part of your position leave part of it for overnight that's how i would play it that would be your trade of the day i hope this information has helped you because it's super important to be able to take a look at the market and go okay today Overnight, we got a 40-point S&P 500 gap higher. What comes into play? What major moving averages come into play? What trend lines come into play? What are the different scenarios that might unfold this morning? Which ones will I trade aggressively? Which ones will I be more passive in? That's how you set up your game plan as far as market conditions. Then you start drilling down to the individual stocks looking for relative strength heavy volume, technical breakouts. Thanks so much for watching. Trade well. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers, and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.